Okay, so welcome everyone to our next um, Lunch and Meet event. I'm not on camera right now because I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, but um, my name is Mary Gibbs. I'm co-director of Women Who Code DC, um, and I'm really excited for this event today. Um, just a few first things to go over. Um, what is Women Who Code's mission? To empower diverse women to excel in technology careers. And our code of conduct is that Women Who Code is an inclusive community. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing because I think you guys can, can read it. Um, but basically, just be uh, respectful of each other throughout the event. Um, that's all we ask. So, yeah. And with that, I'm going to introduce Bay. They're going to lead um, our lunch and meet today. And I'm very excited to watch. So with that, um, I'll turn it over to you. Cool. OK, I'm going to share my screen. All right, can you see my screen? Yep. Awesome. Cool. So, yeah, welcome to Lunch and Lead. Um, let me introduce myself. Um, my name is Bay Shairang Saris. I am a self-taught front-end engineer with four years of experience in software development. And because I don't have a traditional degree in computer science, so practicing Coding on lead code makes me get better at understanding and using data structures and algorithms. So today I'm, um, I'm gonna share about how the problem solving techniques that I use when I um, try to solve like lead code problem. So here is the agenda for today. Uh, what is lead code and why is it important? Problem solving steps. And then we will practice with a real problem. And after that, I will um, introduce you to two-pointer technique and how it will um, um, help us optimize the, the problem. And then I'll show solutions and we will have Q&A after. What is Lead Code? Lead Code is an online platform for coding interview pre preparation. The service provides coding and algorithmic problems intended for users to practice coding. And I include the link in this slide. I will share the slide after the pre presentation so you can um, go to lead code. Why is it important? A lot of companies use lead code types of problems in their technical interviews. Therefore, it is a great, great place to practice your problem solving skills by using your knowledge in data structures and algorithm. So problem solving steps that I use. First, understand the problem. Second, create your own test cases. We will um, dive in each of these steps um, after this slide. High level, and then after like, write down your ideas, implement it with code, test your code, and then estimate time and space complexity and optimization. First, understand the problem. Read the problem out loud. Make sure you don't skip a word. And then you find the keywords in the problem. Usually those keywords will give us some hints. And then the third, try to answer these questions. What are the inputs and outputs of this problem? What kind of data structures that's related to this problem? And what are the constraints? Second, create your own test cases. Try to create your own test cases to make sure that you truly understand the problem. Think about edge cases, simple cases, and some complex cases. Three, write down your ideas. Start writing down any idea that you have to solving this problem in just plain English. Don't worry about programming. Then list out all your idea. If you, you can list out more than one approach if you have any idea. And then try to arrange the order of your idea into steps, like a pseudocode. 
for each approach or just the base approach. Four, implement it with code. So start coding, follow, so following your pseudo code that you wrote from the last step. And you can use console log or like print statement in Python to verify things while you're working on each step. And for interview prep, prep you should also practice talking while coding or like before you coding each line of code. So the interviewer can understand what you're trying to do. Five, test your code. Go through your code line by line using the test case as input. You should know like what your code doing on each line. If there are like um, automated tests, you can run the test like on lead code, fix your code if you find a bug or if there is a failed test and test it again. Six, estimate time and space complexity and optimize your code if applicable. Now, practice with a real problem. Today, we're gonna use these techniques with um, this problem on lead code 125, which is a valid palindrome. Okay, I'm gonna put this link in the chat. Any questions so far? Everyone's good. All right, I put the problem in the chat. Awesome. I'm gonna have this slide next to the problem because I want to own oh, how to okay that's all right so we're gonna use this technique with the problem so first I said read the problem out loud make sure you don't skip a word and find a keyword a phrase is the palindrome if after converting all uppercase letter into lowercase letter okay let's see what keyword words that I find out is like converting and then uppercase lowercase letters and removing all non alphanumeric characters. So like what is alphanumeric? This is another keyword that we should know. It reads the same forward and backward. Alphanumeric characters include letters and numbers. Okay, I think forward and backward is a keyword as well for this problem. Given a string S, return true if it's a palindrome or false otherwise. You can answer the input of this problem is string output is what, Boolean, right? Now, let's see. Okay, we found the keywords. We know input and output. What kind of data structure that related to this problem? Can anyone tell me so far that we see? The stringy data structure? Um. <laughs> It's, yeah, it, it's a, yeah, I would say string. Not really the data structure, but yeah, it's uh, something that we have to deal with in this problem. And what are the constraints? In lead code, if you scroll down after example, um, these are the constraints. So the string can be from, the length of string can be from one until two times 10, um, this is like 200,000, right? Two, five, yeah. The length can be up to 200,000. So if um, the time complexity is really bad, it can be, can be really bad. And it say S, which is string consists only of principal 
printable ASCII character. Yep, I think ASCII is another uh, another keyword in this problem. Let me read the chat. Yeah, string use array kind of thing. Exactly. Yep, it's very similar to array, but there are some methods that different that you can use uh, between string and array. Cool. What is next step? Next step is say create your own test cases. Okay, first let, let's um read the example. Example one, say you can have a sentence like this, which includes letters and you see uppercase, lowercase, also like some other characters like comma, space, colon. And this say output return true because after you removed all the non-alphanumeric characters and um, make it to lowercase, it reads the same forward and backward. Okay, let's see, this one is a, a simple one. Raise a car. Um, raise a car is not a palindrome because R-A-C-E, this is R-A-C-A -A if you read backwards. So it's, it's gonna be different. And example three is just um, a space, which is true. Why is it true? Because after you remove the non-alphanumeric characters, it's just an empty string, which reads the same forward and backward. So it is a palindrome. Now let's create our own test cases. Can you guys help me? Doing this, let's see some edge cases. What, what do you think is a uh, is edge cases? This problem. Empty string. Empty string. What what it should return? Um, what is the problem? Is it a palindrome empty string? I think example three says it is. Oh yeah. Oh, also. With the constraint um, in lead code, it will probably never have an empty string, but it can be like a space. And then after we remove it, an empty string, but yeah, it, it's, it's good. It's good education. Anyway, anything else that you can think of? One character string. Like what character? Like, like just one character, like, I don't know, A. <laughs> a, okay. A, is this, is this a palindrome? I think so. Yes, because it reads the same, right? Forward and backward is they yeah. both A. True. Um, what about like this? What did return? True, right? True. Why? Because you didn't read it um, both ways, uh, the same string? Mm, almost, almost right, but um, it's a non-alphanumeric. So yeah, it's it, it because after we remove, it's an empty string, so it's true. It's about like, um, that. Or would it return? Return true, right? Because you're removing the question mark and the tab, the... Correct. The... And then... Okay. Last one. And yeah, but yeah, but if the more you test case you can think of, it's, um, it's better if you have time. Okay, last one I'm gonna do, let's say, Okay, what about that? That should return true, right? Because your uh, everything will turn into um, non capitals, right? Yeah, right. We we compare after it's all lowercase. Mm -hmm. 
the whole case. Capitalization doesn't matter, correct, Barry? Nice. Now, I think we all understand um, the constraint and the problem very well. We're gonna go to the next step. Um, write down your, yes. Do you wanna just pause for any questions currently? And there was one comment, if you could just maximize the browser a little bit more to make it easier to see. Um, the lead code, right? Yeah. Sure, sure. And I can make it bigger. Is that perfect? Is that better? Yeah, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, I missed that. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, write down your idea. Okay. So, anyone have any idea that you think we have to do? It, any idea you just throw out now is like a brainstorming idea. So for me, I would say, I will look at, usually look at the keyword that I have. Usually it tells me what to do. Like I, at least I know after converting our uppercase into lowercase letters, I know we have to, to lowercase the string, right? One thing that we have to do. Right now, we don't care about the order. We just try to list out what we think we have to do. And the second thing I see here, say like, and remove all non-alphanumeric characters. This is another thing that we have to do to get um, this result. And then it reads the same forward and backward. So I think like, boost force, I would just follow this. It reads the same forward and backward. So after we lowercase and remove all alphanumeric characters, we just create a reverse string so that we can compare both strings. If they are the same, then return true. Right. If they are different, then return false. Everyone follow at this point? Yes. Or uh, if you have anything that. Yeah. OK, cool. And now. Let's say we only this is the best thing we can think of right now, which is fine. Looks good to me. Now, let's arrange the order of your idea. Let's see, do you think this order is good or should we switch orders? I think this order is good. First lowercase, okay. then removing all alpha non-numeric characters, non-alpha numeric characters, and then creating a reverse string and then comparing. I think this one looks good to me. Yeah, it looks pretty good, but yes. I think we can maybe switch this to, it's not really different, but um, it's helped a little bit because if we remove it first, then we have a shorter string to lowercase, right? Maybe it's a help with um, performance just a little bit, but yeah, it's it's uh, still return the same result. Yes, yes but I have it uh, when you hear, we don't have to deal with the non-alpha numeric uh, for the conversion. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, cool. Now we finish this step, go to the next one, implement it with code. Now we're gonna start coding, uh, following our pseudo code and this is, this is our pseudo code. So removing all non-numeric, non-alphanumeric characters. Um, I'm gonna write in JavaScript and in JavaScript, we're gonna, it's gonna be a new string, right? So we're gonna call it alpha numeric string. And this is our original string. We can use um, replace to replace um, characters with something else. And I'm thinking like 
we should replace non all non alpha numeric with empty string and then it will just return the alpha numeric so how do we do that because non alpha numeric can be a lot of things um like space um question mark slash um Usually, if you put a string here, it will only do like one set of characters, but we can also use, sorry, regular expression, right? Meow Mary, very nice. Regular expression um, is, it, um, it's like a pattern matching. So you can do more than one, one character in here and I'm not gonna go too deep about this, but um, in regular expression, you can use this, it's called negate to exclude um, non-alpha numeric. What is alpha numeric? Alpha numeric is a all letters, all letter and number, right? So lowercase, uppercase, and then zero to nine. So that, let me just write down, oh, zero to nine. So everything that is not these letters, numbers will um, be replaced with empty string. So like I said, Great. use Absolutely. console log. Yes. Um, if we were to reverse the order and lowercase the string before removing the non-alphanumeric, would that simplify the regular expression? Yeah, you you can, if you lowercase it before, you just have to do this, right? Because, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can do it. I think, yeah, these two steps can be um, in any order, I think it's, yeah, now I think about it, it's not that um, different, right? But uh, let's um, just do this. So we know we include order, exclude order, non-alphanumeric. Also replace, usually it will just replace, if it find the first one, it replace and then it's done. So for, but in regex, you can add this, um, slash g, it means like global something. It, it, it will just search for all occurrence in the string. So it, let's see. Let's see if it actually do what we want it to do. Then, I'm so locked. Like I said in this step, make sure before we go too deep, make sure things are working as expected. It's okay, it's wrong, but, oh wait, <laughs> I have a comma in here. It, I don't need comma in here, sorry. Yeah, you can just do like in the range like this. Let's try again. This is good that we console log to see the values. So I'm really very new to JavaScript. Is console.log similar to print print a function right. in C? Okay. Right. Yeah, but I just add um this bracket so it's become an object so I can see the variable name. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, this looks good. But we also we need to to lowercase, right? And in JavaScript you can just chain the the method like this. I think this is how we do, and let's print it again. Let's see, ooh, we read to lowercase is not a function. I think I might have it. Write it wrong.
All right. Looks good. Now we get the, we got the lowercase alpha numeric string. What, what else do we want to do? Next step is create a reverse string. Okay. Create a reverse string. So it's going to be a new, new string, new variable. Yes. So we're going to create from this string. So how to create a reverse string? You can do it in many ways. You can create a loop and then you can loop from the back to the front and, and um, concat string, or you can use a um, reverse method, but you have, to, um, you have to translate the string into an array in order to use the reverse because the reverse method is um, array method. So, just this is a brute force, so I'm just gonna do that to make it quick and easy to read for now. Reverse, and then it's still an array, so we have to join with empty string, so it becomes uh, becomes a string again. Let's look if it's actually what we think it is. Reverse string, okay, looks good. Now, the next step. We say compare both strings if, that is, if they are the same, return true. So we can just return the comparison. Right, so this string, if it equals to the reverse string, then it will return true. If it's not equal, then it return false. So is there three equal to signs? Wait, can you see that again? Um, there is three equal to signs here. Oh, that is how it is, the comparison operator in JavaScript. <laughs> we use three. Oh, three equals. Yes. Oh, yes. We have two and three equals, but three oh. is a strict, strictly, strictly comparison. So, I see. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Uh, I'm very <laughs> new to JavaScript. Okay. Now you learn. Learn new thing every day. It's good. Yes. Cool. <laughs> Let's run the test. See if it passed. It's actually the next step now. Cool. Let's uh, submit. Nice. Nice. Okay. Next step. Let's um, estimate the time and space complexity of this solution. B. Yes. Um, could you please uh, just give me a quick explanation of that, uh, how to find the reversed string, the alpha new still dot split, yes, that step. Oh. I think, yes. Oh, okay, the reverse string, right? So yes. basically I want to use the reverse function. Okay. But the reverse function is the array method. So you cannot do string dot reverse. So this split, it will just split the string into an array. So I see. yeah, let's say like car, it will become an array of C A R. Yeah, but okay. um, if it's like there is a space, it will become C space A space. It will just split everything into an array, you know? Okay, okay. Yeah, but if you do split by an, a space, then from C dot space dot, uh, C space A space R, it will become just C A R because we split by the space. Please, okay. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, all language should, should have this, uh, the same 
I see. Okay. And then also join. You wanna join with empty string because um if you join with something else like if you say like this it will be like c dash a dash car after you join join okay. it will make it to a string again you can join thank you no problem okay now um i don't know if you guys have learned about this before time and space complexity um but Basically, it's um how how our code works. Um, how to say? If if the input size grow, is the is our code like work more like grow with the input size? Let's say if the string is like two hundred thousand character has to has like the most here, right? Does our op operations here like increase also? And I would say yes, right? Because like the longer the string we have to replace, this is like O of N because we have to O of N, N is the input size. So if the input size is like five, we have to like, let's say just the lowercase, we have to lowercase all of them, five, five characters, if the string is 10,000 long of characters, the lowercase has to do all that. Also the split, split each character, right? So it, it grows with the size of the string. So the time complexity, um, it's, I would say the raw one is one N, two N, split three, four, five. I would say it's like five in, but in um, big O notation, we will ignore the constant. So it's basically O of N, which is not bad. If you look at this graph, as long as it's not over N log N, it's, it's okay, it's fine. And then space, the longer the string, the, the more we use space or not. And it will be true because if this string is like 100,000 length and they are all alphanumeric, then this string will, will have the same length, right? With the original string. So it definitely grow, grow with the, the input. And we have like two of them. We create like two strings. So we'll be like O of N comes to which actually we can say it O of N, which is okay too. But now this is the our our problem, right? This is our bootstrap solution. It's fine, but um, can we make it better? Yes, we can. How? We're gonna use two, two pointer techniques to make this better. And I'm gonna show you what is two pointer technique. Here is a two pointer technique. What we try to reduce. So I think we should reduce the time, right? Cause if we don't have to at least like reverse string like this, we will reduce one of the space, right? It will be just one and then this will reduce three over here. It will be just something like that, I think. So how do we do that? If we have a alphanumeric string and we don't want to do reverse string, we can use two pointer techniques by, we have left and right pointer at the start and the end of the string. And then we can compare, right? We can compare each pointers, I mean, each character at that pointer. If they are the same, then we move towards the center. And then we check if they are the same, we move toward the center until the two pointer meets. If, when it meets the same characters, and then we can end the loop because it's the same, you know, it's not different. 
But if one of them, while we check, is different, then this string is not a palindrome, right? Because it has to match with forward and backward. Okay, let's see. Um, we have like 40 minutes, I mean, 20 minutes. Um, I have the code in here. I'm just gonna go through the code in here, which is not that difficult to follow, I think, because let's see. So first we clean the string. This is the same as the our last solution. And then we create left and right pointers with their starting value. So the left one will start at index zero and the right one will start at index, um, like the last index of the string. And then we use a while loop. As long as the left index is less than the right, you know, they're not meet, meeting yet, then we, we will keep checking. So we check the character at the left index and the right index. If they're not the same, then we can return right away that they're not a palindrome. But if they never return here, we're gonna move the pointers toward the center of the string. The left will um, plus one and the right index will minus one. And then it will go through the loop until the two pointers meet. If it meets, it finished the loop and um, that means it passed the check. So this string is a polynome we can return to after the loop. And this one will reduce um, like two, two n. Yeah, because this is one, oops, one, two, right? And then three, three loops basically. So far, anyone have any question? Anyone still following at this point? I have With a question. Point? Just yes. something I'm like thinking about. If the string you start with, it has an odd or even number of characters, what, does that matter here? Uh, let's, let's see. So this one in my example, oh, wait, sorry. I'm trying to find the uh, annotate. Okay. So this is what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, right? It's odd. So we have the middle. So what, what are, let's say A, B, B, A. And we have two pointer. If you move here and then move here. And then this one will move here. It will not go meet, it will not um pointing to the the same character, but it will pass, right? And if this code still work. Oh my God, sorry. Yes, because it will not be less than, it will be left now will be not equal, but greater, greater than right, right? So if it's like equal or left is greater than right, then we stop the loop. So it works with um even and odd size of string. Thank you, that was a really good explanation. Yep. Let me try to remove this. Oh my gosh. Oh, I don't know. It's Zoom's just update and why is not clearing? Okay. Cool. Now, we can see that um, there are rooms to improve a little bit. Like if we can, what about like if we don't want to create a string, a new string at all. Can we do that so we can save some space? What about if we work out of the original string? Yes, we can do that. And then here is the, oh, why it's not, oops. Okay, this is the second solution. 
if we don't want to use regular expression, we want to create a new string, we can just um, also use a two pointer techniques, left and right. And we will check if the current string is an alphanumeric string, uh, alphanumeric character by, I create a, like a helper function. You can compare the character with the, um, the character A, so A to Z or capitalize A to Z. And if it's a number, it will be between zero, zero and nine. This is, um, I, I attached a ASCII code table. We will look at that after this. But yeah, this each character has ASCII code, has that, has that code. I think like a lowercase a is like 96 or something. So when you do like comparison like this, it's like it will treat it as a number. We'll treat the character as a number. So you can do like greater than or equal and less than. Actually, let's be, let me just um, show you the, the, the ASCII code table now so you can see what I'm talking about. So here is the table. Oh, oh. Yeah, you can see like a space is actually has the code as number 32. Oh, capitalized A is 97. So, and it's in the same, this range. So 97 to 122. It's upper cases. And where is the lower case? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Sorry, I misunderstood. A is 65, this one, to 90, and then lowercase is 97 to Z, but um, there are many ways that you can compare the, the character with ASCII code, but this is one of the way that you can do, just um, compare the character. Yes, I'll share the, the link um, after this. So, any any um, questions so far? <laughs> Everyone is um, good with this. Oh, also, okay, I, I didn't finish that, sorry. So if the character is not alphanumeric, maybe I should write this to Let's say like if it's like a exclamation a a so let's say this is the, the problem that we're dealing with. So the first one is not alphanumeric. The left pointer will just move. And I use if else if else. So it will not go to anything else. It will just um go to the loop again and if and it will check again if the left Pointer is alphanumeric. Now it is. It is because it's um, satisfied this condition. Then it will check if the right one is alphanumeric. The right one, if it's not, it would just move to the left, but in this case it is. Then it will go to else. Now they both are alphanumeric. Now we'll check. We will have to lower cases first because it can be uppercase, right? So we lower case both, both of the character and then compare. If it's not the same, then we can return. It's not a polynomial. If it's the same, then we just move the pointer toward the center like we did in the other solution. Everyone's good. Right, yeah. Um, cool, let's remove my drawings and see the next slide. Yeah, I put a lead code problem. Oh, I wanna sh show you if you're not familiar with lead code problems, you can choose um, by topics. There are many topics. Um, is no which one 
yeah, you can, if you want to practice array of problems, you can choose just arrays or like string, and then you can do difficulty, easy, you know. And another thing I like to do, you know, when you're new, is everything is hard. So you can do acceptance rates, like start with the higher one, like people can do, you know. And difficulty, easy. Oh, well, it's not moving, but yeah. Acceptance rate. That's the code and the ASCII table I add it here for you. And yeah, let's connect. I put I'll 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 share the link right now. Uh copy. I'll share in the chat. And let me know if you cannot see the link. And I, I include a, a quote here. I think it's very nice. It doesn't matter where you are coming from. It, all that matter is where you are going. It doesn't matter for me. If I don't have a CS degree, I know what I'm doing. So I'm keep learning and you got this. We got this. Okay. Any questions? Or any other uh trick that or technique that you guys use that you want to share yeah it's good that um I you guys see yeah oh, i think it's good that sorry, you guys like, join the uh, meet, meet up like this I'm not sure Mary, you were talking? Oh, yeah, sorry. I don't think there's any other um, questions that I see. I'm just keeping an eye on the chat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you for um, joining and participating. When I when I started, I, I joined a meetup like this, you know, to learn from other people and practice try to try to engage it, it will help you thinking and it will be faster every time and you learn from other people yes meow uh it's just a request to see your link maybe because i don't know if anyone have can see a link um yeah i put a link in the chat did you see yeah. the link yeah yeah but then when i click on that i cannot see so i need to request. oh cannot see Yes. Okay, okay. Let me anyone with a link, sorry. Okay. Actually, now can can you try that again? Oh, I can see it now. Yep. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Nice, nice. Great nice. job. <laughs> um this so ha asked, would this recording be added to the YouTube channel of women who code? Um, I can answer that one. Uh, I will add it um, after this. Yeah. Um, and how would we access that, um, the video? I can send out a link to the meetup attendees um, after the fact to the YouTube once it gets posted. Or you can, I think you can comment in the, in the meeting, um, the meetup event. Oh the comment the link also yeah i can do that yeah cool thank you thank you mary for hosting and thank you for leading this is great oh my gosh what an amazing like that was so clear and the steps were great so i really appreciate it it's really good yeah I'm, I'm glad that um i can help and yeah uh the best way to learn is to teach to share to, to share knowledge. I'm not like the best, but um, I just share what I know. And, and yeah. Cool. I didn't even think about that, um, that helper function where you check in place so you can avoid having to, yeah, that was good. I yes, didn't make even it clean. That one. Make it a little cleaner. Yeah, I, I like to create the um, helper function. And because it's also used in more than one place, like we have to check both characters. So it will be the same 
logic for both character. If if you don't make it a helper function, you have to basically like copy paste kind of dry. Ooh. Awesome. Yeah. Good timing. So yeah, perfect. All right. Sweet. I guess we can just end this a little bit early. I'll stop the recording now. Okay. All right. Have